I'm waiting in the parking lot for my partner to get out of the doctor's office. And I thought I could take this moment to share a little something that's on my mind. Um, today I'm talking about, today I'm thinking about um, building good mindset related to your daily piano practice. So I think that most of us who are learning piano either on our own or have taken any kind of piano lessons before, have felt the pressure to be a good student and practice every day. Um, and I know that for some people, this method of daily practice, this routine really works. Um, and I honestly wish I was one of those kinds of people, um, but unfortunately I am not motivated by routine and the, the, the joy of following through with a routine. I've had to find my own ways to motivate myself to practice and to get better at things. And so I thought I would create a video um, kind of sharing my experience in this a little bit and uh, in the hopes that this helps some of my viewers here. So um, let's get started. I think the first thing uh, that I needed to get uh, kind of under my, I needed to really believe in a deep way was the idea that I was allowed to direct my own practice. There is a huge amount of pressure in the educational world um, to submit to authority, basically. Um, and this means like looking to other people, uh, looking to people who are considered to be more experienced than you, more knowledgeable than you, um, in order to help you develop the habits that you need to be successful in piano. Now, I certainly believe that there is value from learning from people who have more experience and understanding than we do. Um, I wouldn't be a very good teacher if I didn't think that I had anything to share with others who are earlier on in their piano journey than I am, right? Um, but too often in educational settings, I see this, um, the submitting to authority as having negative impacts on students because students end up not believing that they have what it takes to direct their own learning and it makes them mistrust distrust themselves and um that can be <laughs> that mistrust of oneself can be helpful in having very orderly piano lessons but it doesn't necessarily help the student become a better learner and a, and, and more independent as a learner and so um the way that I recommend getting around this is by learning to follow your bliss. This is a quote from Joseph Campbell that um, has, it, it kind of resonated with me about six years ago and I've really been following to this ever since. This idea is basically that every person has some kind of a spark of inspiration or guidance inside them. And that inspiration or guidance is, reflected in this feeling of bliss that is really unique to each person. And so I think I think that most people use this idea of following your bliss when it comes to making like life decisions or knowing where to go next um, in your creativity, in your career, whatever. But I think that this is really helpful in building your own piano journey as well. Um, your musical piano bliss is going to look different than other people's piano bliss. And I think that you can do better and you can do better and more quickly in your learning journey um, if you learn to identify the things that are truly enjoyable and truly desirable to you and give yourself the permission and the freedom to let go of the other things even if those other things are recommended to you. So that's number one. Um, number two is this idea that once you have figured out your bliss, once you've figured out what it is that you wanna do, um, you are gonna need to have some consistency in practicing that and, and striving towards that goal um, in order for you to see improvements. Um, but a lot of people can get really hung up on what their consistent practice looks like and can get very discouraged when they don't get the kinds of results from their daily practice that they want or expect. And so my, my second point of advice, um, 
I, I take the words, the wording, the phrasing from a friend of mine who does business coaching. His name is George Cow. Um, and the way that he put it was to be consistent in showing up and lenient about the results. That has been so helpful to me in so many areas of life, but really it's it's helpful in piano too, because basically what this is saying is that if you make a consistent commitment to show up at your piano to work out some aspect of what you're trying to learn, what you're trying to achieve, how you're trying to follow your bliss when it when it comes to piano, you are going to see you are going to see results. They might not always look exactly like what you want, but you're going to feel incredibly good by following your bliss every day by giving yourself an opportunity to explore your piano bliss every day you're going to get better you're going to start making connections across days you, you know for example like one hour of practice once a week is not going to give you the same learning that 10 minutes of practice six days a week would give you you get to build different kinds of connections when you have these little bits of practice um, and these daily amounts of practice um, stringing that learning along from day to day. Um, if you can only fit one hour of practice in per week, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you can only find it, find an hour of time in a week to practice, you are more likely to get more out of 10 minutes of daily practice than one hour of practice once a week. And one way to take that practice a little more lightly on yourself on your expectations and on the pressure that you put on yourself is to be consistent about showing up and leaning about the results that you get when you're showing up. Um, the third piece of advice that I have um, comes, it was inspired by a post that I read by James Clear. James Clear is the author of Atomic Habits and um, he's been really, really influ influential in um, kind of the goal setting community. Um, and he, he shared this idea that I, I totally resonate with, which is basically like, he has this post called don't make the second mistake, something like that. And the idea is basically like, when you get off your train of your track of practice, let's say you miss a day. Okay. That missing one day of practice is not the actual like is not going to break your um it's not going to break your habit missing that second day will though you are way more likely to get derailed from your consistent practice um if you miss two days in a row rather than one day in a row i was like yeah okay i can i can understand that that makes sense and so his way of putting it is um, don't make the second mistake. Don't, don't miss that second day of practice. But what really grabbed me about this post of his was how he said that, um, if you miss a day of practice, it's very common for people to tell themselves, oh, I'll make up for it by, um, by just doubling up on the second day of practice. And, and he says, just basically don't, don't even go there. Like, and it's true, like it makes sense, right? If you set, if you miss a day of practice because you don't have motivation, your response is then to somehow make up for it by doubling the amount of motivation you're going to need to have the next time you sit down to practice. That makes absolutely no sense. And I really like this point in his post, which is basically like to recognize that that extra effort that you were going to put into a double session, you should be putting that just into sitting down on your second day. You are going to need that momentum in order to sit down on your second day. So um, don't double up, don't plan to double up, don't punish yourself by planning to double up. Put that extra effort into making it back to the piano on that second day. And I gotta say, after, 35 odd years of playing piano, um, I can I can definitely attest to that. It is harder to get back after you haven't been at your piano for a while. And if you wanna wait until you just feel motivated to sit down and play piano again, 
absolutely by all means go for it. Daily piano practice is not for everyone, but you are going to be your your opportunities that are afforded to you in piano are going to directly correlate with how much time you spend at the piano. So that is just a decision you're going to have to make. If you want to take your practice really lightly, you're going to have results that also are light, frankly. Um, if you want to be more dedicated, if you want to, if you're if you're inspired to see better results, then this is basically the the advice that I would I personally would share with you. To recap, number one, find your bliss and follow it. Number two, be consistent about showing up, but lenient about your results. And three, if you do miss a day, put that extra effort just into getting back. Don't worry about making up for lost time. Okay, I hope you're well. Celebrate the work that you've done at your piano this week. Celebrate yourself. Take care.